Have you ever wondered if the real estate market was actually safer than the stock market? Well, in this video, we're going to discuss a few of the pros and the cons of investing in each one and help you decide for yourself if real estate investing is for you. Now stick around to the end of this video and we have a special offer for you. Hi everyone, I'm Katie Evans with the Living 48 Real Estate Team, Keller Williams Realty East Valley, and we want to thank you for watching another one of our video blogs today. All right, so the question has come up several times, is it safer to invest in real estate or the stock market? So today what we're going to do is we're going to have some looks at some pros and cons of each one and then let you make your own decision on that. All right, so let's start with some of the pros of investing in real estate. So the first pro I have on my list is that investing with real estate is actually very simple to understand. So while the home buying journey can be complicated and emotional and all those types of things, the actual basics are simple. Purchase a property, manage its upkeep, and then attempt to resell it for higher value. Also, owning a tangible asset like a piece of real estate or a house can make you feel more in control of your investment, whereas when you're buying things like shares of silver or ownership in companies, that's a little intangible and you don't have as much control over that. All right, so the second pro that I have for investing in real estate is that you're investing with debt, AKA or mortgage, and that's actually safer than investing with your own money. So as an investor, you can invest in a new property with say 20% down um, or even less in a lot of cases, and then you finance the rest of the properties at cost. So investing in stocks with debt is actually known as margin trading. It's extremely, extremely risky and really should only be for very, very experienced traders. All right, so that makes it so that pretty much anybody can invest in real estate. My third pro for real estate is that real estate investments can serve as a hedge against inflation. Real estate ownership is generally considered a hedge against inflation because as home values and rents typically increase with inflation. So as inflation goes up, so do your values. So it's kind of a hedge against that. So that's another reason that real estate investment is so great. All right, the fourth and the last pro that we'll talk about for real estate investing today is that there can be tax advantages to property ownership. So for example, homeowners may qualify for a tax deduction for mortgage interest paid on the first uh, about $1 million in mortgage debt. There are also some tax breaks when you sell a principal residence such an, as an exclusion that may allow you to avoid capital gains taxes on that net say, the net sales of, or the net proceeds of that sale. Sorry. If you own and sell commercial property, you may be able to avoid capital gains through a 1031 exchange program. Um, and investment properties can actually earn you tax breaks throughout depre through, through depreciation and writing off some of the wear and tear on the property as well. All right, so now we've talked about a few of the pros of investing in real estate. Let's talk about some cons of investing in real estate. So real estate actually can be more work than stocks. While you're purchasing the property part is pretty easy, you actually have to maintain and um, keep up those properties, especially rental properties. So if you're not really big into property management, it may not be something that you're super excited to do. Um, owning properties requires a lot more than just sweat equity in a lot of, of uh, instances. And while purchasing stocks or stock investments like mutual funds, you just buy them and you're done, all right? So that's one of the cons of investing in real estate is it takes a little bit more work. Another con might be that real estate is expensive and highly illiquid, especially when the market tanks. You're gonna have a difficulty selling off that investment to liquidate those funds. So even when you're borrowing cash, it does require a large upfront down payment typically or an investment. And then sometimes, like I said, getting your money out of real estate isn't quite as easy as it is to just sell off your, um, your stocks with point and click and all that kind of stuff on your computer. All right, here's another potential con to investing in real estate. Real estate has a high transaction cost. Yes, if you want it done properly, you're probably going to be paying for the assistance and help of a professional real estate agent, which is going to cost you some commissions, probably anywhere between six and 10% of your sales price. So that's kind of hefty when you compare that against what it would cost you to buy and sell stock that now don't even charge fees. So there's a potential con. All right, here's another con. It is difficult to actually diversify your investments when you're in real estate. Now you might be able to diversify like states that you invest in or types of properties that you invest in, but at the end of the day, it's all real estate, right? 
So location matters, of course, when investing in real estate. And while one area might slump, values in another might explode. You just don't really know. So diversifying the purchase of real estate properties by location and type, and that would be like mixing up your residential, your commercial, um, that kind of thing requires much deeper pockets than most people have. So again, it's sort of hard to diversify within real estate unless you have a lot of money or a lot of investors or a lot of pool. All right, and the last con that we'll talk about today for investing in real estate is that the return on your investment is not a sure thing. Hmm, you know what? We have a special uh, market conditions advisory we make everybody sign that basically says, Katie's crystal ball broke, and I can't guarantee you what that property is going to do. So while properties have historically tended to rise over time, there is always a risk at needing to sell at a time when you're gonna take a loss. So for example, the 2000, uh, the 2008 um, financial crisis is, is just a reminder of that. Those who could hold on to those properties saw them rebound, saw them gain, and have made great gains since then. But if you needed to sell right then and there, you lost money on that investment. Of course, this is also true for stocks. So, you know, that's just something to keep in mind. All right, let's switch over to the stock market and some of the pros to investing in the stock market. So the first pro to the stock market, it is highly liquid. While investment cash can be locked up for years in real estate, the purchase or sell of public company shares can be done like in a moment, the moment you decide to act as a matter of fact. So unlike real estate, it's also easier to know the value of in your, your investment at any time. You just have to log in, look, see what the stock market's doing, check out your um, statement and, and you have much better idea. All right, another pro to investing in the stock market is it's easier to diversify your investments in stocks. Of course, few people over the time, let alone have the cash, to purchase enough real estate properties to cover a broad enough range of locations and industry and such to have true diversification. With stocks, it's very possible to have that broad portfolio of companies and industries at a fraction of the time and the cost of owning diverse collection of properties, okay? so. Probably the easiest way to invest in the stock market is to purchase shares in mutual funds. We're all very familiar with that. There's also index funds or exchange funds. Those are all easily um, invested in and traded. These funds buy shares at a wide swath of companies, so you get that diversification already built in, and then that gives you all the investors there that um, opportunity to have a little bit of a lot of different pies. So really the stock market allows you to diversify much, much easier. Now in, here's another pro for the stock market, there are fewer, if any, transaction fees with stocks. So while you'll probably need to open some sort of a brokerage account to buy and sell your stocks, the price war among the discount brokers has reduced stock trading cost to almost zero in most cases. They've, they've waived all those fees. So many brokers are also offering a selection of no transaction fee, mutual funds, index funds, and EFT. So again, you can do it for a lot less upfront costs than you can real estate. The last pro that we'll talk about investing in the stock market is you can grow your investment in tax-advantaged retirement accounts. Purchasing shares through an employer-sponsored retirement fund, like a 401k, or through an individual retirement fund um, can really allow your investments to grow tax-deferred or even tax-free. Of course, we would always recommend that you talk to your tax advisor on that, make the best decisions for you and your family and your retirement plans. All right. So let's talk about a few of the cons for investing in the stock market. Stock market prices are much, 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 much more volatile than real estate. The, the prices of stocks move up and down. Like if you're watching the stock market, they're doing it hourly, minutely, all of the above. They're changing so fast. And that volatility can be just absolutely stomach churning for some people. So unless you are willing to take that long view and just know you're in it to win it and plan on staying the course for a long time, it might drive you mad, all right? So just make sure that you have a clear understanding of how volatile the stock market is. Another con to the stock market is that selling stocks may result in capital gains taxes, whereas we can avoid those with real estate to a point, over here in investing in the stock market, you really cannot. So when you sell your stocks, you may have to pay for capital gains taxes. If you've held the stocks for more than a year, however, you may qualify for some taxes at a lower rate, so that's kind of nice. 
but you also have to pay taxes on any stock dividends for your portfolio that they've paid out through, during the year. So there's just a lot more to understand about stocks and bonds and all that kind of stuff. So make sure that you are discussing those with your financial advisor as well. All right, and the last con that we'll talk about for the stock market is that it can trigger emotional decision making. While you can buy and sell stocks a lot easier than you can real estate, that also means that you can do it in really quickly in a fit of passion one way or the other, and that might not be to your, your benefit. So when the stock market wavers, investors often sell rather than hold on to those things where they would be so much smarter to just hold on to them and let it run its course so that everything comes back. Uh, you've heard this, the phrase, you know, buy high, sell low. That's what most people do in the real estate, or, I'm sorry, in the stock market. So that's what we want to make sure that you're just there to go for the distance and you're there to stay the course for the long haul. All right. All right. So we've talked about a handful of pros and cons for each type of investments. And as promised, we have a special little bonus for you for hanging out to the very, very end of this video. So if you still like the idea of being a real estate investor, but don't want all the cons of being a landlord or flipping homes, you may want to consider investing in what is called a real estate investment trust. Okay. It's also called an REITS. So REITSs are companies that own, they're also often, um, they also often operate those funds for you. They, are income, they operate the income producing real estate such as like apartments, warehouses, uh, offices, malls, hotels, those kind of things. The most reliable REITSs have strong track records for paying large and growing dividends for their investors. So many online brokers publicly offer or offer publicly traded REITSs and an REIT mutual funds and also ETFs. So if any of those sound interesting to you, that is another way that you can invest in real estate, but not be so invested that you own the whole kit and caboodle all by yourself and you're responsible for the whole thing. So if that's interesting to you, take that information, head on over to your financial planner and tell them that that is something that you are interested in. Of course, if you need a referral to a great financial planner, um, let us know. We'd be happy to refer you to a few of those that we work with personally and uh, let you interview them and see if they would be a good fit for you and your family. All right. All right, so thanks so much for watching this video. We would invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, of course, and follow us on all of your favorite social media platforms. If you're interested in learning more about investing in real estate, please contact us today for a free consultation. And if you'd like a referral to a great wealth management person, again, reach out to us and we'd be happy to pass on some names to you there. All right. Thanks so much for watching our video and we will catch you on our next one.